Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, I'm going to put pistons and rods in these two engines. But we've got to solve a problem first. And it has to do with this and this. And it wasn't that easy to solve. Dang it. Now about six months before I was scheduled to get going on the project, I just happened to find a new set of Hepalite pistons and Getze liners, stock size. And I thought, well, we gotta get them now, get that part of the problem solved to begin with. So when it was time to start the project, then I took these liners in to have the final hone put on them, but there was a problem. Just want to let you know uh, what's going on here, and we got a little bit of a problem with our brand spanking new cylinder liners. They're out of spec right when they come out of the box. I had Kenny done a total engine service uh, just to expedite the process. Uh, have him uh, put the proper horn on this, and he called me up and said, you know, I think we got a problem here. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're gonna check this access here. And we're supposed to be at three inch, 543 and three. That's where the zero is on the dial bore gauge. And here we got a good uh, solid two thousands, too big. On the top, you go down on the bottom, it's a pretty solid uh, thaw and two tenths too big there. I'll turn it 90 degrees. Go parallel with the wrist pin. There we have about a half a thou too big. And we check it on the bottom. You get it almost to zero, which is uh, right where everything should be. So we got uh, two thousand uh, thou taper and two thousand solder on. So that's a story on these brand new liners. And Everything's here is at room temperature. So the solution, as I see it, is to look for another supplier of cylinder liners. I think Melling is a, uh, is a possibility. I just need to find somebody that actually is a dealer for them. And uh, the other option is, and this is the one I'm leaning toward, is that I've got a number of sets of really good liners that I keep in order to resize them as necessary. But they're close, I mean, they're closer than this. And uh, that's something I think uh, we're gonna take a look at it. And based on Kenny's assessment of having worked on both, he says the stock liners seem to be a much better quality liner. So we'll see what we can do. A few weeks later. So here we have two different manufacturers of liner. Both of them were recommended to me, but one of these is not like the other. And while they look the same, they look identical. In fact, the whole problem lies in here. Okay, so we're at Total Engine Service with Kenny. And what we're doing is we're gonna run the gauge through a Molly uh, Jaguar V12 uh, cylinder liner, and we're gonna we're just gonna see how good these guys are. Boom! 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 And boom! A couple of ten thousands out, it's right? Up, now, up. what is your official assessment of that there liner? 
A lot better than what you brought me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the issue with the uh, stock liners that I brought? Got them right here. Okay. Just pick one. Yeah. Plus a half. Plus about seven tenths. Plus seven. Plus one. Okay. So actually, for stock liners, those aren't bad. Not bad. Plus seven. Plus six. Plus a half. About zero. Okay. So what was your problem with the stock liners? Because they are pretty close. They're, uh, you haven't seen them all yet. Show us a really bad one. Oh, uh... There's a half, there's a half. Zero. There's plus one in there, no, uh, about plus About one and two tenths. Eight. There's a zero. There's one. So, okay, we do have a little bit of uh, variation there, but those new ones that I brought in, the first ones, the Getsies, in the yellow and white boxes, yeah. those are better than those. If, if you're, I mean, we're two thousands out around, or two thousands over, and so yeah. forth. So, uh, why some of these? If I could pick through my rest of my stock and find some that were close to these ones that were pretty, pretty, pretty good, would those be workable, or would you? Do you have a problem with those? What size are we going with? What's our final bore size? Well, these are a half, or, okay, let's take one that's a half a thou got taper and out wrong. Mm -hmm. Or let's say it's got one thou taper yep. and out wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, in order to get that straight and wrong, I'm probably going to need two and a half thousands. Okay. To material to work with. Okay. So as long as these are in the spec of the manufacturer, could we just put a finish on them and use them? You probably could. Probably could. It's hard to say what happens sure. to these things when you put them in the block yeah. and tighten them down. What about the good old fashioned yeah. brush home? That'll work too. That'll work too. Just, just a dingleberry, huh? Yeah, dingleberry, my favorite word <laughs> relating to tools. I've been called dingleberry myself <laughs> once or twice. So, anyway, um, these new ones here, these are certainly. They're considerably better than. Yeah. yeah. Now, what would you say about the finish? That's on there. They use cast iron rings, chrome rings? I believe those are cast iron, those uh, Hepolite rings. Oh, uh, they should be fine. I don't have a profilometer with me, but. Uh... Okay. So there is a gauge that you would use in order to determine the roughness. You can, yeah, a profilometer. Okay. So we finally got the cylinder liner situation sorted out. You would think that the solution as far as the Getsy liners would be concerned is you just send them back, get your money back. Well, you know what? There was six months between when I bought them and we determined that they were, they were bad. So not going to return those. Uh, I can use them later on in a project where I need to go oversize, but uh, I'm not going to use those in any sort of a project for a client. Regarding the stock liners, you know, they were within specification in terms of out around and taper. Wouldn't use those in a client engine when I've got brand new liners that are definitely right on the nose in spec like the Molly cylinder liners are. But for an engine for me, I'm going to use those. Probably I got to come up with an inexpensive rebuild for one of my cars. And uh, those are the cylinder liners I'm going to use. A couple of them that need to be replaced, but, uh, but I'll use the dingleberry hone on them or the brush hone as it's 
known elsewhere, and they're going to be just fine. Now, as far as the 6.1 liter TWR engine is concerned, the situation there is a little bit different. The situation here is that we had to come up with a new set of pistons for the TWR engine. And I'm going to do another video on the pistons, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail here. But just suffice it to say that this is an original TWR piston, and this is what we had to come up with with an aftermarket piston. And the problem is that in order to come up with the rings that the manufacturer of this piston wanted, it's a company in the UK called Omega, we had to come up with a bore diameter that they could actually get rings for. So we had to take a stock liner and bore it out to 90.4 millimeters. Not only that, but the liners are shortened by about, I believe it's 180 thousandths of an inch or 130, I don't remember which, but you can see that this end of the liner down here is, is significantly shorter than the stock one. I'd call that about 130 thousandths. Now the reason that these had to be shortened, as you can see right here, is because of the fact that the stroke was increased to 80 millimeters, and that increased stroke would bring the piston into contact with the counterweights on the back side of the crank. So uh, a little bit different, but it was not much of a problem. We used the original liners and bored them out except for a couple of them. Actually, we had to bore these out because it was over 20 thousandths oversize. So we actually had them bored out at DW Engineering, Lieutenant Dan bored these out for me to within a couple thousandths, two, three thousandths of an inch of finish bore. And then Kenny up at Total Engine Service honed them out the rest of the way with a special fixture that I've got for doing that. Finally, after a few months time of wrestling with issues, we've got complete sets of liners for both engines. So there we are. This is Saturday afternoon. And first thing Monday morning, I'm gonna start cutting rings and attaching pistons and connecting rods and start to get these engines together because I got one that's got to be ready to go in two weeks. It's going to be tight. Now if you like these videos, like, subscribe, and maybe leave some comments down below so we know what we can do to do what we do better. And we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.